Alright, hi there. Today's video is on uh, what we commonly refer to as connected objects. Um, by connected objects problems, we mean two objects that are going to be connected together by a string. Uh, the most simple connected type of connected object problem, as I like to call it, uh, looks like the one in this picture. This is what's known as an Atwood's machine. It was a pretty common physics lab to do, too, in your labs. Uh, you just have a pulley. Uh, for right now, this pulley will be massless, so that kind of makes it a little easier. Uh, we have two masses connected over a pulley, a heavier one over here, which in turn, it falls, causes the other one to rise. Now, I do this one different than anybody else will teach you this, so... Just in case, be forewarned, I do teach these problems differently. I'm going to do our example F from uh, our textbook. And I'm just going to go ahead and draw what it looks like here. So we've got the pulley up at the top. I'm going to run a string over it. Uh, I'm going to draw, we got two weights hanging over it. Uh, one has a mass of 2 kilograms. The other one has a mass of four kilograms in the problem. All right, we know that this one is going up, this one is falling down. So this is our basic problem. Most connected objects problem, most of the time are gonna ask you to find the tension and the acceleration. This is typically what you're gonna be asked to find out of a connected object problem. All right, when we go to do this connected object problem, what I need is a sum of the forces. I need a free body diagram and a sum of the forces for each of these objects. So I'm going to start off by doing this. I'm going to make two little XY axes. Axis. I'm going to make two of those. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do I'm going to call this one M1 is two kilograms. And I'll say that mass two is four kilograms. All right. If I take a look at the first object, what you're going to notice is you've got a rope attached to the top of it. We're going to call that rope attention. And then what we're going to also do is come back and we're going to say that it has, and usually I like to start by always doing the masses first. I'm going to call this an M1G going down. And that's the only two forces on this object. This object over here, on the other hand, it's got a tension going up as well. Now, this is where somebody would call T1 and T2. These are not T1 and T2. This string, since this is a massless pulley, this string has the same tension on both sides. So we've got the same T going up here, and we've got an M2G going down over here. Now, the beauty about the Atwood's machine question is this. Some of the forces X on both of these objects is a big zero. Some of the forces X is zero on both objects. Some of the forces Y is equal to. In the case of this one, I'm going to write T minus M1G equals. Now, this is where some people will kind of mess up. You've got to write M1A for this object. All right, now here's where I'm about to teach this one differently. Um, and I'm just doing it by what I've found is best to teach people over uh, 12 years of teaching going on now. Um, this other objects, some books would end up reversing these and call this one, since it's going down, they would say they would reverse their X and Ys and say that this is now positive M2G minus T on this side. Uh, Y'all, when you start reversing axes, that confuses everybody. I'm going to keep it the same. T, that's your Y, and minus M2G, since that's negative. But I'm going to do one thing, and it fixes these problems. Since this object is falling down, I'm going to write equals negative m 2 a. This is the only time connected objects. This is the only time you will see me write something equals negative M2A ever or negative M1A. 
Only in connected object problems do I ever do this equal to negative MA. If I've got an object moving down, I'll write equals negative MA for that object. If I was working a problem and I had something moving to the left in that problem, I would write equals negative MA for an X direction. But this is it. No other problem in all of physics will ever do this on. And what it does, it keeps us from having to reverse our uh, axes on this problem. So this is actually the easiest way to learn it, like I'm teaching you right here. All right, now take a look at your problem. You've got two equations and two unknowns, T and A. The easiest thing to do is usually solve one of the equations for T. T is equal to M1A plus M1G. And now substitute that T in over here, and we end up with M1A plus M1G minus M2G equals negative M2A. All right, get all your like variables now on the same side. I want the A's on one side, the G's on the other. So I'm going to bring this over, and I'm going to knock these two to the other side. So I'm going to end up with M1A plus M2A equals M2G minus M1G. And now I can factor the A out of this side and have A times M1 plus M2 equals... You can factor the, M, the G out of this side and have G times M2 minus M1 if you want it, but it's really not necessary. So this is going to be... A is going to be equal to M1 plus M2, so 2 plus 4 equals 9.8 times 4 minus 2. So this is going to be A6 equals uh, 4 minus 2. 2 times 9.8 is 19.6. And in the end, our acceleration, I'm kind of running out of room, our acceleration is going to be around 3.2, maybe 3.1. I don't know. I'm guessing. Let's find out. 19.6 uh, divided by 6 equals 3.26. So I've come pretty close to it. 3.27 meters per second square. There's our solution for the acceleration in this problem. I'll give you a hint when you're doing these connected objects. Your acceleration better be smaller than 9.8 because if you cut the string in the problem, this thing would then have an acceleration of 9.8. So your acceleration in a connected object is not going to exceed 9.8. And I can tell you another way to know if you did it right. Whenever you get to this last step, every connected object is going to come down to the same A, M1 plus M2. If you have three objects, M1 plus M2 plus M3, a best way of knowing if you've done this problem right, your, M, your M's over here should always end up M1 plus M2. If you end up with M1 minus M2, go back to here. This was your physics. Find out what you did wrong. You messed something up up here. If you have four objects in the problem, you should finish with A, M1, M2, M3, M4. Okay? You should finish just like that. All right. Now let's go back and find the tension. We'll go back to here. So here we can go back and say uh, 2 times 3.27 plus 2 times 9.8. So we've got 2 times 3.27 plus 2 times 9.8 is 19.6. And we've got 26. 0.14 newtons as our tension in this problem. All right, I'm going to pause this one here because of the YouTube time limit, and I'm going to say now let's go to uh, let's go to video number two next. <laughs>